Check out these six hacks to invert colors in Final Cut Pro and make your videos look trippy. In this quick video, I'm going to reveal two drag and drop effects to invert your colors. Then I'll show two advanced techniques that let you customize inverted colors. Stick around until the end to make this color isolation effect and this inverted flicker effect. Let's invert. All right, in Final Cut Pro, the fastest way to invert colors is a built-in effect. Open up the effects browser by clicking this button and go to the basic section here and drag and drop negative onto your clip. That looks pretty good, but we can do better. Select the clip and then open the inspector. If you don't see it open on the right hand side here, just click this button here with the three sliders. And then under the video inspector, you'll see an effect section and then there's our effect, the negative. You can adjust the amount, and I think it looks better if we enable linear invert. It's crazy, the waves look like smoke instead of water. To delete that effect, just select it and make sure you have a yellow box around it and then press delete. There's also another one that I think is really handy. And here's a quick trick for finding effects. Select all in the effects browser, and then down here in the bottom, click on the search bar and just start typing X-ray. And now with my clip selected, I can double click this effect and it will be automatically added to it. Let's check it out. Dang, that's trippy. If we go to the inspector, we can change the amount. We can reduce it if we want, but I like it as is. Coming up, I'll show you how to do this cool color isolation effect. There's a cool way you can do an invert color and control the look or the color. Go to the Titles browser by clicking this button and scroll down to the bottom to this Generator section and then go to the Solids Generators. Drag and drop Custom on top of your clip and then go to the Video Inspector for the generator and set Blend Mode to Difference. There you are. Then go to the Generator Inspector and let's change the color to white. Ah, this looks just like our negative filter we used earlier, right? But here's what's cool about this technique. We can use it to tweak the color of the negative or inverted look. So we can add some green to it if we want. Or we can set the ocean on fire with this red. Oh man, that's freaky looking. This technique is really cool because it allows you to customize and to get a very specific look. You can also put it on the bottom of your clip. If you do that, set the generator blend mode back to normal, and then your top clip, the surfer clip here, let's set the blend mode to subtract. This actually has a little bit different look than before. Are you ready to invert colors in Final Cut Pro? Has this video been helpful? If so, will you give it a thumbs up so other people will see this video? Thank you. I appreciate that. In just a bit, I'll show you how to make a cool inverted flicker transition. Go to the color section of the effects browser and add colorize to your clip. This doesn't really invert colors. You can see that it adds kind of a tint to the video. If we look at the video inspector, it's remapping black colors to this color and white colors to a red. Let's try and invert it and see what happens. Let's remap black to white and let's remap white to black. Eh, it's just kind of a mush. Nothing really there. That's no good. Instead, this effect is better for adding a tint or color to your video. So let's take this black and let's remap it to blue and let's remap white to a light purple. It's not inverted, but it does give it a kind of a cool look and feel. So I've got this dancer and what I want to do is I want to isolate the red dress and make everything else black and white. Select your clip and go to the color inspector and click on this drop down and add a color board. Then click on the mask button and add a color mask. You'll get this eyedropper and you can use that to isolate the color. I'll just click and drag on that to try and get as much of that red dress in as possible without getting anything else in it. I can hold down shift to add to that mask. I'll get a little plus next to my eyedropper and I can click and drag to add more. We need to add a little bit more over here on this side in the shadows. That looks pretty good. Now, click on outside 
and let's drop saturation all the way down and click back on inside and let's increase saturation just a little bit to make that red dress pop more. All right, let's play it back and check it out. That looks pretty good, right? The dress pops off screen, isolated, but there's a problem. Her shoes are red too and they're a little bit distracting. So let's cut those out. Click on color board and add another correction. And this time let's click on the shape mask. We're gonna bring it down by the feet and we'll just adjust this mask, bring down the feather a bunch. And we want the mask to cover the shoes but not to cut off any of the dress. And while it's selected on inside, let's drop saturation all the way down. So now the shoes are desaturated too. But she moves around so we need to move the mask with it. We'll go back to the beginning of the clip and reset the position of the mask to be over the feet. And then next to mask, I'll just push this keyframe button. And little by little, I'll work my way through this video and I'll move the mask to keep the feet covered but not to cut off the dress. All right, let's take a look. Her feet are masked out, the red dress pops off screen, everything else is black and white. It looks cool. For this next effect, I want to spice up this footage of these soldiers sweeping a sweeping an office. Right now it just cuts from this shot to this shot, but I want to add some cool kind of flicker inverted effect that transitions from one to the other. So I want to cut up each clip into two frame segments and I want to do six of those. So let's go to the edit point and I'll go back one, two frames, press command B to cut the clip and I'll do it again. One, two, command B, one, two, command B until I have six clips. And then I'll do the same for the next clip. One, two, command B. Let's zoom in on these clips a little bit so we can work with them better. Let's add the x-ray effect to the first two frame clip. Drag and drop it on. Copy that clip and then select every other two frame clip. Okay. And then press shift command V. This allows me to paste this effect to multiple clips at once instead of dragging and dropping it over and over again. I wanna make sure effects and x-ray are enabled and everything else is disabled and then press paste. So now it's on every other clip. Now select the second two frame clip, search for bad TV and drag and drop that effect to your small clip. Copy that clip and now every other clip select and then press commission. Command Shift V. Make sure Bad TV is enabled and press Paste. Now I want to reselect the first one that I put Bad TV on. And then I want to go to Video Inspector here. And I want to increase the scale a little bit on all of these so it looks like it's punching in. Okay. All right, we've got the flicker effect ready. Let's uh, play that back. That's pretty cool, but. I think it needs something more. It needs some, you know, sound effects. So I've got this cool epic song here that I'm gonna add. And then let's add some static sound effects. Go to the audio browser, click on sound effects and search for static. I like this one right down here, static accents too. I'm gonna drag it right below the section where I've cut and let's zoom in on this. And I actually want it to start a little bit before the flickering happens and end a little bit after. So with the audio clip selected, I'll move my playhead to where I want it to end and I'll press option right bracket to trim it. Then I'll use these little fade in and out handles to fade it out and in. All right, let's play it back. Oh, that's awesome. It looks and sounds high tech. What a cool effect. Did you know that Final Cut Pro comes with over 160 built-in effects? I cannot live without these effects. So I put together eight tips when editing video effects that will make your amateur video look pro. Take a peek at those tips right here.